Hello everyone, this is Harry. In this issue, we have an American thriller film, Gone. At the beginning of the film, Jill walked in the dense forest of the park. Then marked the area on the map. Back home, her sister Molly learned that Jill had gone to the forest park again. So Molly knew that Jill's mental state had not improved. It started a year ago when Jill was sleeping alone at home that night. And she was taken away by a gangster who broke in suddenly. The next day, Jill woke up and found herself trapped in a deep hole with no way to ask for help. At that time, she picked up the soft soil at the bottom of the cave and found a broken human bone. It turned out that there was a girl's body buried under the cave. At night, the gangster put down the ladder and came into the cave. Jill suddenly turned around and stabbed the gangster in the neck with a bone. Then climbed up to the ground by the ladder and panicked for life. Finally, someone in the forest park found her covered with soil and called the police. Jill explained to the police how she had been tied up and found a body in the cave. After a week of searching, the police didn't find the deep hole Jill said. According to the investigation, there was no sign of invasion in Jill's home when she was tied up. There were no scuffle marks on her body, nor could she describe the criminal's features. Moreover, for a few years, Jill had not stood, her parents' death, and she was committed to a psychiatric institution. So in the end, the police decided that this case was Jill's imagination, and put her in a psychiatric facility. Although no one believed Jill, she never gave up looking for victims in the forest park. She also learned how to capture and defend herself. She knew that the gangster would come back. Because she was the only one survivor to escape, she knew the secret of the gangster in the forest park. Jill lived with her sister Molly after the incident. Jill worked the night shift in a restaurant. That morning, she came home from work and found Molly missing. Molly's phone was turned off, and she didn't see Molly's pajamas. Then Jill found Molly's earrings on the floor. She immediately panicked, took out the gun and put it in the bag. She rushed to the police station to report the crime, claiming that the gangster appeared again. Jill speculated that the gangster had intended to bind her, but last night she drove Molly's car to work, and her car was at home, so the gangster thought it was her who was sleeping at home, so he took Molly away. Jill also took out the information she had collected about the girl's disappearance. Those missing girls must have kidnapped by the gangster. Police thought Jill was too neurotic. Molly was an adult and it was normal to go out one night without telling her in advance. Jill saw that the police were indifferent to her inference and anxiety, so had to take action on her own. Jill lied that her bike was stolen at home last night. She heard from a neighbor that about 1 a.m. last night, there was a blue and gray van with a 24-hour business logo. Parking in front of Jill's house. Jill inquired online that this kind of van may be owned by an unlocking company. Then she tracked such van on the road to find the company. The boss of the company said that they didn't get the job of going out to unlock the lock in the early hours of last night. Jill couldn't find any information, so she sneaked into the van to check. She found a roll of tape and a shopping ticket from a hardware store in the van. Unexpectedly, the boss son found Jill in the van. Under the tension, Jill took out a gun and asked him how the shopping ticket was there. He said a man who called Digger, rent the van last night. He called the police after she drove away. The police knew that Jill had a gun in her hand. Then they informed the patrol police cars in all sections of the road to get her back. Because Jill had a record of metal problem, it was not legal for her to hold a gun. Jill called and told the police officer what she found, and said the items on the ticket were wide tape, plastic cloth, rope, kerosene, and a lamp. These were the tools. The van renter called digger was the same word as digging a hole. Police officers didn't care about the suspicious information, just wanted to get her to come back and hand over the gun. At this time, Jill's last hope for the police was completely dashed. Now only herself was the one who could really save Molly. Jill found the hardware store according to the ticket, then cheated the owner with a lie. According to the owner, it was a man about 40 years old who came to buy those tools. He drove a red car, the man seemed to say that he was staying at the Royal Hotel. When Jill was about to leave, the police also tracked her car. So she ran away from the bathroom window. Then Jill came to the Royal Hotel. She lied again and got the man's room number. Carefully came to the room, but they had moved away. Jill found a matchbox on the ground where she worked. She suddenly remembered the guest who tipped a lot last night. Jill rented a car and was going to ask her colleague about the guest. Jill's psychiatrist called to say she was worried about Jill's condition. She wanted Jill to talk to her now. Jill knew that the police were waiting for her downstairs. So far, everyone thought she was crazy, and no one cared about Molly's disappearance. Jill knew she didn't have much time left. Because when it got dark, the gangster was going to attack Molly. She came to a colleague's home to explain the situation, and the colleague said that the guest came every two weeks. She learned that the man's name was Jim through chatting. He left his phone number last night. Colleague thought Jill should go to the police, but Jill grabbed the phone number and left in a hurry. A patrol car caught up with Jill. Jill turned into an alley, abandoned her car and ran away. She came to her colleague's house from the path to borrow the car. The colleague still wanted her to go to the police. Jill said that if she was caught by the police, she would be sent back to the mental hospital. She had to be forced to take medicine. If she didn't take it, it would prove that she crazy. 
Meanwhile, Molly had been killed and buried under a hole in the forest park. When people occasionally found those bone in the future, the police would only understate that Jill was telling the truth. But for her, she would be guilty for the rest for her life for not being able to save Molly. Jill's words moved her colleague. She drove her colleague's car and called the guest according to the number. He had no surprise that Jill called. He didn't admit that he was a gangster, but Jill could feel it was that man who bound her. According to the instructions, she went to an abandoned park to meet that man. On the way, Jill got a call from Molly's boyfriend saying Molly had come back. Jill was very happy. She asked Molly to answer the phone, but Molly's boyfriend had been prevaricating, which made Jill suspicious. Finally, Molly's boyfriend admitted that the police let him cheat Jill back. He told the truth, because he thought Molly was missing for a whole day. There must be something wrong, but the police only wanted to catch Jill who they thought was crazy. No one asked about Molly's missing. Jill didn't find anyone at the abandoned park management station. She continued to drive deep into the jungle according to that man's guidance. She drove to the end of the road, got out and walked along the path. In the dark jungle, Jill was nervous and scared, but when she thought of Molly's dangerous situation, her pace was firm. Jill walked a long way to a small tent made of plastic. There were several pictures of the girls tied up, including Jill's and Molly's. Jill went on and saw a kerosene lamp on. She followed the light to the entrance of the cave, shouting Molly's name. Jill turned on the flashlight and saw a girl's body at the bottom of the cave. At this time, the gangster suddenly reached out and pulled Jill into the cave. But this time, he was out of luck. Jill had a gun. Jill fired two shots at the gangster and climbed up the ladder to the cave door. Then took away the ladder and raised a gun to ask where Molly was. The injured gangster begged Jill for mercy and said Molly was still alive. She was in the basement of Jill's house. In fact, Jill was the real target of the gangster. But after a period of observation, he found that Jill had been on the night shift. So he tied up and brought Jill here again to kill her. Jill took out the picture of Molly being tied and saw the background to believe what the gangster said. But she didn't plan to let the gangster go. She poured kerosene into the hole, to fire the cave and go away. Jill threw away her pistol on the way home. After waking up, Molly broke free from the rope and climbed out from under the house. She told the police that someone had taken her while she was sleeping. Molly now finally believed that everything Jill said was true. Jill was happy to see Molly safe when she got home. Molly was worried that the gangster would come back. Jill whispered to Molly quietly. Molly calmed down when she knew the gangster would never come back. The police came forward and asked Jill where her gun was and where the person she had looked for was. Jill said that that person didn't exist, everything was her imagination. The police looked like being slapped in the face, stood in speechless and had nothing to say. Soon after, the sheriff received a letter with a marked map of the forest park. There were also photos of the missing girls who was tied up. That's the end of the film. To be honest, it's the worst villain I've ever seen. Well, that's all for this issue. Don't forget to follow and like my videos. Thank you for watching. See you later.